Matthew's Gospel, the 21st chapter, beginning at the first verse. When the disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. 
St. Mark's Episcopal Church on this Palm Sunday morning. <coughs> Holy Eucharist, right one, begins on page 323 at the bottom of the page. Almighty God, on whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. 
Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. for the reading of the lessons. The first lesson this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, beginning with the 50th chapter, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with words. Morning by morning wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn back. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled at the beard. I did not hide my face, from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them comfort me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're going to talk this morning in Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. We will read this responsibly. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. I was wasted with grief, and my ears with sighing. My strength fails me. Cause of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am reproach to all my enemies. Those of my acquaintance, when they see me in the, seat, in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. 
But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also kindly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name. So that at the knee of Jesus, so at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord this is the one Sunday written in the rubrics where the congregation may be seated because of the length of the Passion. At the time which we use time to stand, I will give you a signal. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, 
went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? The priest prayed him, 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, he came to Jesus, saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city, and to a certain say to him, The teacher said, It's near, and I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed, and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes, as it is written of him, but woe to the one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death, remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this stop pass for me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus again went away for the second time and prayed, My Father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priest and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then the crowd came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then 
would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple, teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priest and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? What is this that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to Jesus, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. From now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed me. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? The scribes and the elders answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But the chief priests and the elders said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the 30 pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was the field when it had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they gave them for the potter's field. Lord commanded. Now Jesus stood. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when Jesus was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? 
For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to him, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to him, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, Why, what evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus to the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put on his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. Let us stand. And when the soldiers came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. If God wants to, for this man I say, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And after his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the satyrion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Many women were also... Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the 
when it is easy. A rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a Jesus. Joseph went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And Pilate ordered to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in its own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. Joseph then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that the impostor said while he was still alive. He said, After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, Jesus' disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And that last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of our Lord. Crowds were ahead of him, and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. I speak to you this morning in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, we might need a deep breath after hearing that epic story this morning. My friends, we have just heard the long passage narrating the days of events that take us from friends, body being seen. And no doubt about it, a lot. By Matthew this morning, that establishes us in Holy Week a lot of details, a lot of parts, and yes, a lot of emotions. And we hear a version of it every year. And we start the Sunday with fanfare and palms like this morning, singing Hosanna. And then the world mess of humanity comes, and all of a sudden, Jesus is dead. Each year, we come to this same story, and each year we bring to it the hurts and the joys that we all have lived through. The births and the deaths, the sufferings and the excitements, the pain and the learnings that time has brought us since our last Palm Sunday. And my friends, it is so, so easy to rush right through this, to skip through the week with our eyes fixed as we celebrate what we celebrate next Sunday but to sit dutifully through this week. And for us through Thursday, Friday, and for some Saturday services, knowing that the real deal comes on Easter morning because we all know what's coming next. We know that this Sunday, and for us Thursday and Friday, are merely a setup of the triumph of resurrection on Easter Sunday. And we know that Jesus will defeat evil, injustice, and the other forms of death, not with the military might of kings, mind you, but with the new life of resurrection. But all of this will come later. For now, there is value in sitting with the passion without rushing straight to the resurrection. Because too often in life, we don't have a happy ending to hold on to during the tough times in our week. 
in the midst of crisis and chaos, how often do we get to say, but in a week, everything will be great. I'll get to eat chocolate or to watch Netflix or to go back on Facebook or whatever your Lenten discipline was this year of choice. Again, the blessing, you see, of the church calendar is that we get to live through the seasons year after year, developing and bringing more experience from our lives into the meaning of these stories. But, mind you, we skip through the tragedy, the ending. And the Egypt to get Jesus to the temple. The healings. Skip the hungry to get... Skip the martyrdom to get straight to sainthood. Skip the crucifixion to see the resurrection. One of the benefits you see of Holy Week offerings is that we pull out all the big moments of this story and we draw near to them during the week. We learn about them. We live them. We identify with them. We actually sit with them. And on Thursday, we will sit in those very moments that you heard today on Gethsemane. We will sit in the times, like the disciples, where we simply can't stay attuned and attentive to God's work in our midst. We will sit through the betrayal of Christ and see what was participated in, in and the world around us. And my friends, on Friday, we will sit in that moment of death. And at that time, we ask ourselves, how has our experience of death changed since we last heard this story last year? What grief do we bring to the political execution of our Savior, the political martyrdom of our Messiah, the murder at the hands of the authorities, claiming law and order? And even later this morning, or even later this week, mind you, or the next time we happen to celebrate the Eucharist, we hear those familiar words that we heard in the story today. Take, eat, this is my body, and drink from it, all of you. When we hear these words in this story, the Passion, it's a reminder that Jesus shared the cup and the bread with everyone at the table, including the one he knew would betray him. Yes, yes, the Last Supper is which Jesus shares the bread and the wine as his body and his blood happens after he discloses the knowledge that he will be betrayed by one at that very table. And it leads to a new significance, to making room at the table and for us to share our gifts as well with everyone in the community. After all, look at the elements in the story. The plots, the places, the people. We know them all too well. So we take a look at those props. We see a donkey and a colt, regular livestock given to the... We see palms out on our vehicle in our hands this morning natural in Jerusalem and wave to the glory of God. We off on normal people's back and offered to the glory of God. And then later there is bread and wine and a table, a simple meal, sacred in the glory of God. You see, my friends, these are everyday, mundane, secular, worldly items made holy in their offering to the Messiah. And in their offering, they have been made sacramental. Jesus, too, lives in the perfection of the worldly made godly, fully human and fully God. And as we heard this morning, Paul reminded us in the letter to the Philippians that while Jesus was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, doulos, being born in human likeness. 
even in his own identity. Jesus showed us that something so worldly, like humanity, can also be so holy, like divinity. The incarnation, you see, not only exemplifies all that is sacramental, but also blesses that which is human. That Jesus would empty himself in order to be one of us is a sacrifice akin to his crucifixion. My friends, have you actually met us humans? We are horrible. What humanity did to Jesus and continues to do so and to others, so many who are oppressed, who are shot, who are exploited, who are arrested or deported or executed is horrible. Why would God want to be a part of this mess, we ask, to which we can only answer, it must be love. And in return, you see, we are asked to love. To love those who come to the table, even when they know they will betray us. To love the one who asks to borrow our cult, even if it's confusing and requires hospitality and generosity beyond our own capabilities. To love the divinity, which is in a mess of humanity, enough to lay down our coats from our backs on that dusty road. And finally, to love Jesus, the one who has shown us how to seek and My friends, what do we have available to us individuals and as a community that we can offer to God at the same time? Look around us at what we see, use, take for granted in the day by day. How can we make an offering to God, a thanksgiving of gratitude, maybe even an acknowledgement of Christ's good news, putting ourselves into the story the way that we can touch us to the very core? We can hold on, you see, to the hope of Easter. As we live in the moments of betrayal this week, live in the moments of grief and injustice, and finally of violence, live in the moments of that story and the passion as well as our daily lives. And may we all have that we make to be made holy. And may we have everything we need and we have and everything we do to become pleasing unto God to get us through this week. Amen. Amen. As we enter the season of Holy Week and of Easter, you'll notice that there is no confession of sin, but we'll be going straight to the prayers of the people, found on page 328 in the Book of Common Prayer. Kneeling as you are able, let us pray those prayers. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Fred, our priest in charge, our presiding bishop, and Ruth, our bishop, that they may, both by their life and God, set forth thy true and lively word, rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meeting heart and due reverence, they may hear and see We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land. Rejoicing in my whole creation, 
they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Norm Johnson, Jr., Nagano Tony King, Jr., Dwayne Harvey Kralos, Lisa Robinson, Francis Sullivan, Gladys Lum Allen, Gail Fielding Davis, James Warnsley, Roger Williams, Jr., Mary Wallace, Aaron Harvey, Parker Linder, John Dash, Cindy, Jim and Phyllis, Rhonda, Shawan, Kathleen, Jennifer, Anton, Chris, Jean and Rob Turner, Carol Bug, Robert Jordan, Maxine Lindsay, and Mark Holliday, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants to part of this life in thy faith and fear. And we pray especially in our diocesan and Anglican cycles of prayer for St. Anne's Episcopal Church, Conway, the Reverend Sandra Moyle, interim, interim rector, and the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. The palms on the altar are given to the glory of God by Suzanne and Jim Heisman in thanksgiving for our daughter Heather on her birthday. Beseeching me to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator. Amen. All who truly turn to him, come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Love the world that he gave us to the end that all have everlasting. This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, and he is the perfect offering only, but for this world. Let us stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share that peace. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace. That's peace.
Presbyterians. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you out on this bright Palm Sunday. I'm really happy that it didn't rain today and we were able yeah, to be able to go out onto the front portico and do that procession this morning. That was great. Also wanted to say good morning to those watching this live stream this morning. Glad to have you all visited as well. To Mark Holiday, who's watching us rehab. Glad to hear that heart transplant went well. Your wife is here. She's with us this morning. She you're doing well. You're doing a great job. Also want to shout out this morning to Pauline Caffey and Chris as they make their way back to Florida. It was good to see with you and be with you this week. Want you to have a safe trip if you head back to Florida. Wanted to make a few things aware to you of the bulletin this morning, especially for this week. It's going to be a very busy week, if you can tell already, because the schedule is back on the back. Wanted to make sure that you knew this. I uh, wanted to let you know that the sign-up sheet is still out front for the Lenten dinner for Tuesday evening on the 4th at 6 o'clock. It's going to be pork loin. Please sign up to bring a side dish, a dessert, and bring family and friend. We'd love to have you there. The more, the merrier. The more we'll have, the better it will be. We'll start off that evening with an informal communion service, do a blessing, and then start with the meal. And so that'll round out the uh, Lenten dinners that we've had as we find ourselves progressing into Holy Week. So that way, what we'll find out is Thursday evening, we'll have the Monday Thursday service here at 6 p.m. Friday, we'll have two services for Good Friday. The first will be the noon service at 12 o'clock right here. And then later that evening, the Stations of the Cross around the church. And we'll have the uh, walk service around that way as well. Then we'll be here bright and early uh, Sunday morning at 10 a.m. for our Easter Sunday service. And wanted to say a quick thank you to the sacristians of St. Catherine for all the work you did and the cleaning up of the altar. You may not notice it, but I do. They got up there with brushes and toothbrushes and got all the corners and crannies and got a hold of that. And so looks like a brand new altar painted white. And I do appreciate that. Along with the stairs, too. They scrubbed those stairs. Did a phenomenal job on that. Love the way the palms looked this morning. It was incredible. Thank you so much. So, so very much. Anybody with a birthday this week? Oh, here we go. Somebody's coming down the way. Let's turn to page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer while she does that. 830. Here we go. Happy birthday. Yeah. You got there? All right. All together, prayer number 51. Watch over thy child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her as she stands. Comfort her as she falls. Raise her up if she falls. May the peace which passes under abide all the days. Anybody with an anniversary this week? Nope. All right. I imagine we'll have more of those as the month of April rolls along. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God.
you're there. We also have set the table this morning in thanks for all those people who rushed out to the Midwest and to the South to help those in the devastation of the tornadoes from the last day. Holy Communion resumes on page 333 in your book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right, so do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this, as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. sermons. And glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness, thou seek to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. 
And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of our passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy, through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom and with whom, and in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take in remembrance that Christ died for you and fill up in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Together we pray. Almighty and ever living God, we must heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of thy Son and Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us by favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the midst of the body of thy Son, the blessed company of all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to serve the Lord.